取るんです In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist on this Friday of the fourth week of Lent. And today in the Gospel, the actions of Jesus challenge us and especially our response to the coronavirus. And we will hear in, in the homily how we can imitate better the response of Jesus in these times that are facing us these days. And for those times when we have not responded with reason and with caution to the situations that face us in our daily lives, we now pause for a moment and we ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Ungodly men reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base, and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him and will deliver him from the hands of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, 
but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them. And they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hope for the wages of holiness, nor discern the prize for blameless souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now pray the responsorial psalm, beginning and ending with a response. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, those whose spirit is crushed he will save. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will guard, he will keep him guard over his bones, not one of his bones shall be broken. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants, all who trust in him shall not be condemned. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. But after his brethren had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. Some of the people of Jerusalem said, therefore, Is not this man whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they say nothing of him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? Yet we know where this man comes from. And when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed, as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from. But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he has sent me. So they sought to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we are told that Jesus was confining his activities to Galilee. He did not want to go anywhere near Judea and the vicinity of Jerusalem. And the reason for this is that there were people who wanted to kill him. And so Jesus, in response to the threat to his life, does not want to expose himself unnecessarily to danger. And when he does eventually venture out into Jerusalem, he does so with caution. And John tells us that he went up to Jerusalem not publicly, but in private. 
From midnight here in South Africa, we have been on lockdown. Our movements have been restricted. We have been confined to our homes. And the concern on our minds at this time is, what are we to do? And I think we can learn four lessons from what Jesus did when his life was under threat. Firstly, Jesus recognized the threat against his life. And with all the information that we have on the coronavirus, we too are uh, informed of its real threat to our health and well-being. And with this knowledge in mind, like Jesus, we have to recognize it and acknowledge it. Secondly, Jesus used his reason to weigh the pros and cons of his movements. And we too have been given the gift of the intellect, the gift of reason. And we ought to use it to assess our context. We have to reflect on the threat of the coronavirus, as well as on our civil and religious authorities' promulgations. And thirdly, having done all this, Jesus then confined his activities, not exposing himself to danger. The threat of contamination and infection is real. And we now know that social distancing and self-isolation have proven effective in not spreading the virus. With this in mind, we too have to confine our activities to our homes and not expose ourselves and others to danger to our health and well-being. And lastly, Jesus was cautious when he eventually went to Jerusalem. And when we too have to go out for one reason or another in public, like Jesus, we have to do so with caution. And I think here of those working in essential services, our doctors, the medical staff, our security personnel, and many other people whose services we require for the smooth running of our society. They do, as they venture out in public, do so with caution. Jesus knew that he eventually had to go to Jerusalem. His ministry could not be confined to Galilee. And as his followers, we too cannot confine and restrict the word of God. We have to find ways at this time to continue our efforts at evangelizing to continue the worship of God, to continue our exercises of loving God and neighbor, and deepening our family prayer life, keeping contact with our brothers and sisters, especially those who are stressed and depressed and those whose families are not nearby, using social media spaces to proclaim the word of God All these are means that we can live out our mission as church in these times of lockdown. The church, we have to remember, is not the four walls of the building on the corner of William Nickel and Sloan Streets. You and I are the church, alive and active where we are. And at this time, The Lord is reminding us today to be the church where we are. We now present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. We pray for the ministers of the church that they may continue to proclaim the divine origin of Jesus in their words and in their actions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. us. We pray for the gift of peace, 
that a renewed purity of heart and mind may enable us to understand the hidden counsels of God and the primacy of human rights. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, that God may be close to them when they are broken-hearted and crushed in spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have asked for our prayers, especially those confined to their homes, those who feel lost and abandoned. We pray for our loved ones, wherever they are, at this season of distress, that God may deliver us all out of our troubles. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that Jesus may cleanse them from all sin and raise them up in his glorious kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God Almighty, these are the prayers and petitions we bring before you. We ask you to hear them and to grant them to us, for we make them in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you praise, should humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now pause for a moment and we ask the Lord to grant us his peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, peace in our families. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. Amen. In Christ we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, 
so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and in your goodness protect with heavenly assistance those who trust in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration of the Eucharist has come to an end. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.